Good morning, friends. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to our Evensong services that are happening at 5 o'clock outside on the lawn here at Community Presbyterian Church. Just a brief time of song and scripture, a short devotion, and some warm fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We gather at 5 o'clock here, and on Sunday, October 25th, I would like to expect, extend a special invitation to members of Community Presbyterian Church. Everybody is welcome, but in particular, we need members of CPC to attend on that night because we will be having an outdoor congregational meeting. We will be acting on the recommendation of the pastor nominating committee, which we were supposed to do way back in March. We were going to elect me as your next installed pastor here at Community Presbyterian Church. Things got put off, and here we are asking you to come on October 25th. Come for the Even Song service at 5 o'clock. It'll be a little bit abbreviated. It's also Pledge Sunday, so bring your commitment cards, bring a lawn chair, bring a pen to mark your own ballot, because members can vote in this election. So I do hope you will plan to attend. It's an important event in the life of this congregation. Along with electing our next pastor, we will be electing deacons and elders. So you want to make sure your voice is heard for that as well. So all are welcome every single Sunday at 5 o'clock. But in particular, CPC members, I do hope you will join us on October 25th at 5 o'clock to vote on the recommendation of the pastor nominating committee for the next installed pastor here, as well as elders and deacons for the coming 20, 2021 year. Thank you so much. Good morning and welcome to Community Presbyterian Church. During the month of October, we continue our stewardship study called Our Money Story. We may have been curious what a series with that name might look like, but it's turned out to be inspiring and thought-provoking. Last week, our series focused on releasing those ideas that no longer serve us. This week, we're encouraged to reimagine. The series is from a sanctified art, so through visual art and poetry, scripture and liturgy, we're given something wonderful. New questions to ask ourselves, new ways to look at scripture, and an opportunity to take all that we learn and put it to work in our lives today with relevance in our modern circumstance. Today's welcome comes from that series, and I hope our Sunday School students will join us to listen. Can you imagine unfettered love, free and bold, wild and true, the kind of love that changes you? Can you imagine a home, safe and bright, with impromptu dancing, meals around table, and laughter late into the night? Can you imagine faith like a compass that guides the way you shop and vote, the way you love and hope, that asks questions and yet still believes, even despite uncertainty? Can you imagine a world where trees, bees, and all living things grow wild and free? Where peace is the narrative and hope the currency? A world where new stories are testimonials and funerals are far between. Can you imagine? Yes, we can imagine. Today in worship, dare to dream. Dare to imagine what could be and pay attention for God is here in wandering thoughts, hopes, and prayers. Let us worship holy God, that great unfettered love. So to all our Sunday school students this morning, I would say this. Our church is small compared to some others, but we welcome big imaginations and big ideas. You have a whole lifetime in front of you. And these times will play a role in your decisions and the way you live your life going forward. Think of a world that looks and feels like the world just described in that poem. When we let God into our decisions, when we let God guide our imaginations and our big ideas, the world changes. Let's pray. God, help us to push our limits and to think outside our circumstance to all that is possible. Help us to draw you into the center of our lives and our world reimagined. Amen. Life be.
Hi, my name is Nicholas Race, and today I'm reading Psalm 119, 33 through 40. Teach me, Lord, the way of your decrees, that I may follow it to the end. Give me understanding, so that I may keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Turn my heart, turn my heart toward your statue, and do not towards selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. Fulfill your promise to your servant, so that you may be feared. Take away the disgrace I dread, for your laws are good. How how I long for your precepts, and your righteousness preserve my life. Thank you. Good morning, friends. Will you join me now as we unite our hearts and minds in the prayer for illumination? Holy God, we want to see what you see. We want to see what you see. But we stumble through roadblocks of bias and narrow perspective, fear and limited information. We are too small to imagine the type of love and beauty you can sow. So in this moment, we ask that you would clear the roadblocks that keep us from you. Blow the dust out of our ears. Thaw out the frozen parts of our hearts. Tell the logical arguments we form about what will and will not work to take a back seat. And as you do, breathe fresh air into our lungs and fill our minds with endless possibilities. We want to see what you see. We want to reimagine this life we're living. Clear away the roadblocks. Amen. I'd like to begin this morning with a poem, an excerpt of a poem from our Our Money Story Stewardship Series. This poem is called Love by Another Way, and it's by Sarah R. And I'm just going to be reading a few stanzas of that poem. If you would like to read the rest of it, you'll find it in the journal that will be attached to the email that came with the web link for this worship service. Love by Another Way by Sarah R. of A Sanctified Art. I used to think that church was simple. Church was community, not the walls. Faith and hope mixed with call. But then the world grew violently sick, and the way to be church was to keep distance. So doors were closed and people sent home. It was all love by another way, and yet it was not how we imagined Sunday. And despite our best efforts, love will fail, churches will close, justice will leave the vulnerable exposed, and when that happens, we must own our part, say we're star sorry, and try to restart. For I am starting to believe that what matters in life will never be easy. So we must imagine and imagine again. We must dream and try, die and rise. And in our rising may we see the next thing reimagined thing. Until step by step we are home, love by another way. We're continuing in our sermon series, Our Money Story. In our first week, we remembered God's money story, manna moments in the wilderness and the practice of Sabbath. Last week, we discovered the magnification of the Sabbath practice in the release of Deuteronomy and the Sabbath year, releasing the need for accumulation of resources as the rich young ruler in Matthew walked away sad because he had many possessions. Did he stay that way? Or did he reimagine a new way to relate to what he had, as well as to his neighbor? 
the backstory of the first five books of the Hebrew scriptures that we've been looking at in particular these last couple Sundays and we'll look at again next week. The backstory of these five books is Egypt and Pharaoh and reorienting the people from their years of enslavement into an identity as children of God and citizens in the kingdom of God. Israel had been steeped in Pharaoh's money story. Not only a monopoly on food did Pharaoh have, Pharaoh also had an, a monopoly on imagination. Walter Brueggemann says this, the peasants become slaves, cannot imagine themselves except in the domain of Pharaoh, where they have become helpless performers of cheap labor. That is Pharaoh's story, says Brueggemann. The one, the one with the most is propelled by the most intense anxiety to the hurt of others. And that was Pharaoh hoarding, striving, oppressing in order to meet the needs of his economy, an economy that benefited him at the expense of Israel. And into Pharaoh's money story, God reimagines a new money story and weaves it into the societal code, the very societal fabric of Israel. So hear now these words from Leviticus. First, we'll begin in chapter 19, verses 9 and 10, and then we'll move to chapter 25, verses 8 through 12. Leviticus chapter 9. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare or gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. And continuing in chapter 25, we hear about the sabbatical year the year of Jubilee. You shall count off seven weeks of years, seven times seven years, so that the period of seven weeks of years gives 49 years. Then you shall have the trumpet sounded loud on the 10th day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement. You shall have the trumpet sounded throughout all your land, and you shall hallow the 50th year, and you shall proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. You shall return every one of you to your property and every one of you to your family. That 50th year shall be a jubilee year for you. You shall not sow or reap the aftergrowth or harvest the unpruned vines. For it is a jubilee, it shall be holy to you. You shall eat only what the field produces. Friends, these words are ancient, these words are true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In Leviticus, Moses is receiving instructions directly from Yahweh. Instructions for how the Israelites are to live after generations of enslavement in, in Egypt by Pharaoh. With these instructions, God imagines a different world for his children. In God's vision, laws are provided that are meant to ensure just and equitable relationships. Woven into the very fabric of society is love and care for one's neighbor. It is so different than Pharaoh's society, than Pharaoh's economy, with the wealth of some at the expense of many. It is a fabric held together by the love and care for our neighbor. It's no wonder that Leviticus 19 was one of Jesus' favorite texts when he quotes Leviticus at all, he quotes Leviticus 19. The parable of the Good Samaritan is where we hear Jesus quote Leviticus 19, love your neighbor as you love yourself. This whole section of Leviticus deals with relationships between neighbors and is where we first hear, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And Jesus quotes that in the Good Samaritan 
And when he uses that term neighbor, particularly in that parable of the Good Samaritan, he doesn't just mean the people that we like. In this case, our neighbor are those at the margins of society, the poor and the immigrants. Leaving the edge of the harvest is the opposite of Pharaoh's hoarding. It is making sure that there is enough for everyone, a man a moment for those at the margins, so that they might have enough as well. Not too much for those that have already gathered, and not too little. In God's preferred society, woven into the very fabric is love and care for neighbor, and we see that here in Leviticus 19. The Jubilee legislation of Leviticus 25 has love and mercy also at its heart, love and mercy towards one's neighbor. The liberty proclaimed is threefold in the year of Jubilee. Liberty for the man who has become dispossessed of his family's land and can now return to it. And yes, it is for the men only because if you recall our sermon series of a couple years ago, the daughters of Zelophehad have not yet made their request of Moses where they were given the land of their father. So at this point, the liberty is for the man who has become dispossessed of his family's land and can now return to it. It is liberty for slaves who can become free again. And it is liberty or release from toil and cultivating the land. The land will lie fallow all year and will produce only what comes up on its own. Again, this is a, manif a magnification of Sabbath. It is a man a moment. As they were to gather on the sixth day and have enough for the seventh day, then now they will gather, they will produce. For 49 years, commerce will run its course for 49 years. But in the 50th year, there will be a rebalancing and there will be enough for everyone. These jubilee ideals may seem just that, pie in the sky ideals with no practical basis in reality. And yet, do you recall Jesus' teaching the first time he unrolled a scroll of the temple? He said, I bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight for the blind, letting the oppressed go free, proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. My friends, that is the year of Jubilee. And the first time Jesus is recorded in the Gospel of Luke of opening that Isaiah scroll, he is referring to Leviticus 25 and the year of Jubilee. Just as Jesus was fond of Levitical teaching, some Americans have been captivated by it as well. In 1751, Speaker of the Pencil Pennsylvania Assembly Isaac Norris ordered a bell for the tower in the Pennsylvania State House. It would call lawmakers to their meetings, and among those lawmakers were George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, Benjamin Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson. They would be called to their meetings by this particular bell. And this bell would also ring so that the town might gather for the hearing of the news. That bell bears this inscription, Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. A direct quote from this jubilee legislation found in Leviticus 25. That bell acquired the name Liberty Bell when its inscription provided a rallying cry for abolitionists wishing to end slavery. Movements from women's suffrage to civil rights have embraced the Liberty Bell and particularly the inscription upon it that it should ring throughout the land liberty for all the inhabitants. And it has been embraced in both protest and in celebration. Pennsylvania suffragists commissioned a replica of the Liberty Bell. Their Justice Bell traveled across Pennsylvania in 1950 to encourage support for women's voting rights legislation. Then it sat chained in silence until the passage of the 19th Amendment in 1920, 100 years ago this year. 
The bell is famous for the crack that it has in it, so it doesn't ring by its clapper anymore. No one living has ever heard that bell ring freely with its clapper clanging back and forth inside, but it did ring on D-Day in 1944 when it was struck seven times, one time for each of the letters in the word liberty. In a nationwide broadcast announcing the D-Day invasion, a radio announcer proclaimed that the bell is pealing for the, d the day of liberation for the countless millions of enslaved people throughout German-dominated Europe. The bell proclaimed liberty and release, even in 1944. We find ourselves now in 2020 in a year of reimagining. Reimagining what that quote, liberty, proclaimed throughout the land. The bells tolling, what does that mean? This reimagining has been thrust upon us in the form of a global pandemic. But it is also reimagining with the cries of those who cry out for justice in our streets. We are invited this week to reimagine God's money story at work in our community as we consider that quote found on the Liberty Bell, found in the pages of the Jubilee legislation, where love and kindness is woven into the fabric of society and it rings throughout the land as liberation for all. In this extraordinary and awful year, you can see glimpses of jubilee ideals automakers are offering relief on car payments libraries are not imposing late fees there have been moratoriums on evictions for people unable to pay their rent credit card holders have been able to skip payments avoid late fees and receive lower interest rates on my street alone there was a suspension of ticketing on street sweeping day and still most of us moved our cars anyways out of respect for and gratitude for those who keep our streets clean. These jubilee moments are going to come to an end. And yet, can we imagine, can we reimagine what it might be like if some of the best of this year was an ideal that we could reimagine into a future? I've heard many people say, and I have felt it myself, there are things I don't want to return to. There is a jubilee mindset of Sabbath and enough that I want to carry on. Our collective realization that we are all connected, we are all in this together, and together we will get through this. I don't want to lose that newly imagined understanding that we belong to one another. We have seen it in this year like no time I've ever seen before that we need one another and we will get through this by taking care of one another, by showing that love and kindness that is woven into the very society of God's kingdom. That love and kindness that we rediscovered was even found in my neighborhood. When one person in my neighborhood would go shopping, they would send out a text and say, what do you need? And other people would reply. And we would help each other out. And it had been months since our dog, Eddie, had had a particular kind of dog treat from one certain store. And a neighbor said, I'm going to that store. And I said, oh, if you could get Eddie some of these dog treats, he would be so happy. It had probably been four months since he'd had his favorite dog treat. And when that neighbor came back with the treats and I offered to pay her, she said, this is our gift because we're so happy that you are home and that you are healthy. Little girls on my street drew me pictures and the neighbors next door drew chalk drawings on our sidewalk to welcome me home. And the house down the street baked treats for us just to let us know they were thinking of us. I don't want to lose those connections. I don't want to lose that love and kindness that we show for one another. Those jubilee ideals may sound like they are just that as we read them in Leviticus 5. And yet they were something that was proclaimed throughout the life and teaching of Jesus. 
as he spoke of rebalancing. He was an interrupter as Moses was an interrupter. As Moses interrupted Pharaoh's economy, Jesus interrupted Caesar's economy. May these jubilee ideals interrupt our economy as well, our society. May our society be woven with the love and care of neighbor as God commanded so long ago. That is our invitation this week, my friends, to reimagine God's money story. That love and kindness could be woven into our very being. And that we might continue with these jubilee glimpses that we've seen this year. That we might carry them forward as we reimagine what our society will be like post-pandemic. I leave you with these questions from the journal that you will find attached, again, to the email that accompanied this worship service or that you can find on our website. Consider the directives in Leviticus 19, 9 through 10. How could you leave the edge of your own harvest and resources to share with the poor and the immigrant? How can you put those practices into work in your own life so that others might be able to glean and have enough? Lauren Wright Pittman, the author, the artist who uh, painted the painting, digitally painted the painting that accompanies this scripture this week, she has this to say. It is a mandala-style painting. She has this to say, Rest reminds us of our interconnectedness. Despite physical distancing, people are rediscovering one another while longing for and celebrating every moment of connection. Despite future insecurity, people are finding innovative ways to support one another. I found that in my own neighborhood. Pittman finishes this way, Rest uncovers the enoughness of our lives, and she asks, What will we glean from this time of rest? There's gleaning for us as well. What will we glean from this year? How have you reprioritized rest and relationships in light of physical distancing measures implemented during the global, global pandemic? And finally, how will you reimagine Jubilee ideals after witnessing glimpses of them this year? Will you join me now as we unite our hearts and minds in prayer? Our gracious and loving God, the words of these pages are ancient, and yet they are words from your mouth to Moses, imagining what society could be like, different than the society of Pharaoh, where love and kindness is woven into the law into the codes, into the DNA of society. Lord, these words were on the lips of your son Jesus as he proclaimed the year of your favor as he initiated his ministry during his time, during the time of Caesar. Lord, help us to reimagine as well how the, these ideals might become a part of our money story as we look forward to a new year and new beginnings. May we take away, may we glean something from what we've learned this year. May it be enough for us. May it inform and enlighten us. May it help us to reimagine how life might be different, how life might be more akin to your preferred future, to the life you are calling us to in your kingdom. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Hi, my name is Nicholas Race, and today I'm going to be reading the Affirmations of Faith. We believe in God, the Creator, who, like a painter with a canvas, imagined creation and breathed it into being. We believe in Jesus, who many years later walked this hurting world and showed us a new way to love. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who prods us and pulls us, leads us and guides us, carries us and loves us into a new life day after day. And we believe in the power of imagination, a gift from God that allows us to dream dreams, create anew, start over, try again, and live lives of hope. So in response together as God's church, we dare to dream. We strive to love. 
We try to imagine a new day. We walk together, all with God's help. Amen. I've been blinded by the light of love's pure light. I've been blinded by the light of love's pure light. I've been blinded by the light of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, I've seen the light. Hold me up to the light of love's pure light. My friends, I charge you to go into this week reimagining the possibilities of Jubilee. We've been through an awful year, and yet Jubilee can be seen. May we reimagine a future where Jubilee ideals are still a part of the very fabric of our society. I charge you to reimagine your money story with Jubilee ideas in your mind. And receive this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of God's own spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. Go in peace.